Well, it's Friday. That means it's Facebook Friday Q&A time here on OTRS Central. It's going to be two parts. This is part one. Part two will come up soon after part one is completed. I want to thank all you guys that took the OTR Central Facebook page and posted your questions. Let's get started with part number one here. Jarrett Don Baker starts us off by asking a non-wrestling related question by asking, how are you, Jeff? Well, thank you, sir. What a simplistic yet awesome question that truly is. I am doing splendid, actually. Happy with my job. Happy with my life outside of my job having fun doing these videos again about wrestling, doing some interesting things with more interesting things, in my opinion, to come on this channel. I'm enjoying life, man. I'm feeling really good. Working out most every day, you know, trying to get into shape uh, for the spring and summer to come so I can compete in some of these master's track meets because I've gotten that old now where I can actually do that. I'm doing splendid, man. Thank you for the question. Stephen Bradley, Pisnik64. Asks, should Randy Orton and Batista help Seth Rollins with this tiny problem? <laughs> what would they do? They'd play Where's the Inchworm and Seth would always win. He'd be like, I got it. <laughs> oh, of course, Seth. <laughs> play the game, How Big Is Seth Rollins' Dick? No, really, nobody can find it. <laughs> Nathan Cooper, when Triple H takes full control... Once Vince either steps down or kicks the bucket, do you think WWE will improve? I guess it depends on your perspective. If you're a hardcore fan, you're probably going to think it's going to improve a lot because you look at NXT and you're trying to project that on a much grander scale. And you're going to see at least that as a sample size and assume that some of those elements are going to be carried over. Um, but casual mainstream fans, would they necessarily like that NXT product? And I don't know about that. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think there's any guarantee that Triple H being in charge would make it any better. Could make it worse for all we know. We don't know. And even if we think we know, whether good or bad, the fact is we don't know. The only thing more uncertain than the future with Vince is the future with somebody else in charge. Wrestling asses, what did you think of Mike Awesome in ECW? Never thought, I mean, bored the, thought anything of him. He bored the fucking brakes off of me, if I could be so honest. I never got it. I never saw his appeal. I thought he was boring. I thought he was bland as shit. And that's just me. Duke Morris, who would win in a match between Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins with the coveted title of Mr. Small Package on the line? <laughs> Based off of recent evidence that would come to light, we would say Seth Rollins would win in a runaway. <laughs> but Daniel Bryan would put up a hell of a height. <laughs> Josh Cheney, how ironic do you find it is? One of Psycho Sid's themes was titled Snap. <laughs> One of his themes was titled Snap. <laughs> Second one should have been Crackle. Third one should have been Pop. Fourth one should have been Clean Break. <laughs> he went out the second rope. Because <laughs> Johnny said he needed to expand his offensive repertoire. And of course, it would be in a match involving Scott Snyder. <laughs> Instead of doing something like a double axe handle, instead of doing something like a freaking crossbody or a splash, he decides to do a big boot off the second turn buckle. <laughs> 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 Oh my god, moving on, moving on, because we can laugh about that all day, legitimately. Shane Delane, Shane Delane, excuse me. As someone who's not from America, could you explain to me how the U.S. political system works? You have two parties that are equally incompetent that say different things that ultimately help the country arrive at the same disastrous result. You have idiots that support the Republican Party that think that this is anything other than the case. You have idiots that support the Democratic Party blindly that think that this is anything other than the case. Voters, by and large, bitch about both parties, yet continue to vote them into office. Continue to bitch about the clear and obvious problems in this country, but, however, continue to vote for the same peoples that create the same type of problem. This country is controlled by crony capitalism bordering on fascism, where corporate interest in big oil ruin the country and run the day. Uh, what else can I say to sum up the U.S. political system? Um, that's about it. Uh, most people, when it comes to politics, use fear and emotions, not logic and reason in order to articulate a point. A lot of people don't bother to actually do their research. They get very blinding 
kind of one-sided viewpoints on things and think that makes it the truth because in this age of information, there's more disinformation than ever before. So people don't bother to uh, sanitize themselves from that disinformation. They take what they see automatically and believe it to be the gospel. That's pretty much the political system in a nutshell. Berwin Vargas, I know you're against John Cena beating Rusev, but if he does beat Rusev and wins a U.S. championship, do you think it will help bring back prestige and credibility since the top guy has the title? Well, there's no question it would. And if there was a perk or an upside, and a big upside at that, to a John Cena beating Rusev at WrestleMania for the U.S. title, let's say, it would be the simple fact of the matter is that you know Cena would have the belt for a while, Cena would be featured with that belt every week. Cena would actually have real programs and feuds written for him with that title every week. And as a result, not only would he have something interesting to do, he would have a belt around him that would be elevated in profile, and the people that he worked with would be elevated in profile as well. And imagine the person that actually beat him for that U.S. title, how much they would be elevated. I, mean, I still don't want Cena to beat Rusev at WrestleMania, but... If there was a positive, that could be it, and it would be a very big positive. Uh, Jonathan Pittman, did you see the NXT show this week? If yes, what did you think of the show? No, I did not. I'll probably watch it this weekend. I'm not going to guarantee that I'll review it, but I will probably at least watch it. Larkin Harris, would Dolph Ziggler versus Psycho Sid interest you? Of course, because it has Psycho Sid. It has Psycho Sid. Of course it's going to fucking interest me. It's compelling wrestling television, and afterwards they can play softball. Fuck Dolph Ziggler. It's all about Sid Barry. Steven Jacobson. Should Daniel Bryan be compared to Chris Benoit? Until he roids up about 50 pounds and kills his family? Honestly, no. Sergio Flores. Did you ever think WWE was going to push Snitsky as a monster heel world champion in 2005? Not particularly. I thought they were going to push him for a little while, then lose interest, and then he would eventually go away. And that's exactly what happened, as they still often do. Brandon Harden, how many more world title reigns? I love how you capitalize the R in reigns. Will Daniel Bryan have in his WWE career? I'll put the over-under at two, and you guys can debate down below how many more titles he's going to win. Is it going to be over or under two? I think two is a nice safe number at this point in time. I really, really do. I don't know if they're going to go to him that many times. Claude Thomas, as a whole, define the current state of the wrestling business in one world. word. I uh, have to do one word. It's going to be bad. If I did a different word to encompass the wrestling business and all components of it at this point in time, stupid. It's either bad or it's stupid. Depending on which perspective I want to go with. Nick Perkins, would you let Naomi work it going along with the Missy Elliott song? Well, of course, in theory, I would let her work it. Mm -hmm. Sure. And she would be honored. She knows she loves that white dick. She can sit there and try and fool us all she wants about that Uso love. Everybody loves them all, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, she's got a big white dick destined for her in her future. I know it. Um, Son Goshaku, your thoughts on Hogan job into the rock. Both times they had a match. Uh, hard to really argue with, but I would of like to have seen Hogan beat him at WrestleMania 18. You were bringing back Hogan. You needed to establish him, and especially look at the fact that the next month he won the undisputed title any damn ways. I, I really still think that Hogan should have won at WrestleMania 18, but again, because of the classicness of the match, the iconicness of the match, it's hard to really complain about. Second time they fought, Rock clearly had to win uh, because of what they did and what they were setting up to with uh, Hogan and Vince at 19. Jesse Schwab, is it a Important to have more matches or less matches on a pay-per-view. Less means you can have longer matches, but more means you can highlight more wrestlers. You have to find some type of happy medium. In a three-hour show, if you have six matches, that's just too long for those matches. Because what happens is, is you're stretching things out longer than they need to to tell the story that needs to be told. If a match only needs 15 minutes, why have it go 30? If a match only needs 10, why have it go 20 or 30? And then on the flip side, if you have too many matches, let's say... You have 10 of them on a three-hour show. That might be too many. And you have to cut down and trim the fat throughout the entire night. And most of the matches are very similar in length. They're very similar in style and presentation. Therefore, they're very similar in terms of the way they work, the way they feel, the story that is told. And nothing really stands out. Like, I look at WrestleMania as a perfect example here. I think it's ridiculous that on a four-hour show, they can only have seven or eight matches. That's two matches an hour. That's inexcusable. That is horrendously, terribly poor time management. It truly, truly is. That is god-awfully bad. It's just not enough. 13, 14, in most cases, is going to be way too many. 10 to 11 is just about perfect. But 8, 
Not enough. And the whole logic of, well, you're going to have the matches go longer? No, that's stupid, in my opinion. Michael Corvin, on the hopefully off chance that Taker isn't ready come WrestleMania, amen. Uh, what does WWE do with Bray Wyatt? Um, they're either going to sit there and send him at Sheamus or send him at Daniel Bryan. I don't really fucking know. They've put it all in Bray Wyatt going at Taker at this point. Uh, Alia Sid Johnson, since you compared the WWE to the GOP, would it be safe to say that John Cena is Barack Obama? No, because WWE loves John Cena. GOP hates Barack Obama. If anything, John Cena would be to the WWE what Mitt Romney was to the GOP, you know, in 2012. You know, he was the standard bearer and he perfectly personified a lot of the problems with that party. Um, that's what Romney did, and that's what John Cena does now. So I, I don't, I don't think a comparison is appropriate in that particular case. Uh, uh, let's see here. Your next question: What advice do you have for people who have disabilities like me with autism? Well, I mean, I don't know if I would consider what my condition is. I would consider that a disability. I most certainly do not. I mean, but here's what I say: Is that if you have, let's say, like autism, I don't consider that a disability. I consider that a condition. I don't consider that a disability. Um, you know, it's just my view. Um, if you're a big believer in a higher power, then maybe you sit there and say, well, you know, maybe the reason I was given this condition is because somebody thought that I could handle it and somebody else couldn't, so I could stand the test. So that's why I was given the opportunity to, uh, you know, take this test. I mean, you know, it's uh, kind of one of these things also that when you talk about it, autism you know, or something like that, you know, people don't understand, you know, then fuck them. You know, you, you are who you are. Be proud of who you are. Don't be ashamed of yourself ever at any point in time. And he also asked, was Marcus Smart created due to your feelings towards or depiction of the IWC? Uh, maybe in part, but maybe Marcus Smart is also an attempt to have some fun. God forbid. It's a parody character. You know, something a little different. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. You know, is it going to be the last parody character you're going to see? No. Mm -mm. Would there be some type of muscle mark character at some point in time? Absolutely. Absolutely. Aaron Zach, do you think Pat Patterson saved the pick of Seth Rollins' dick? And if so, do you think he will stalk him? Uh, probably. Uh, Pat Patterson is probably going to keep trying to dress up in a Halloween costume that requires two people, you know, like a horse or something. He's going to want Seth Rollins to uh, bring up the caboose, so to speak. <laughs> Aaron Zach, do you think when Seth Rollins first got head from his fiance that she asked him if he was getting hard and he said he already is? I don't know. You're going to have to ask him. <laughs> do you think WWE will investigate Seth Rollins for deflation? Uh, maybe, maybe not, but probably they should. Yeah. <laughs> Antoine Dupree, why do people give Daniel Bryan a pass, say that he deserves a title shot because they never lost it, but if Norton Cena, Sheamus, or Batista were to say the same thing, they would blast WWE and say they would have to earn it. Um, yeah. And? You're right. You already know the answer to this question. And then you said, also, from what I remember, The Rock never got his rematch for the title. Shouldn't he get his rematch? And who's to say that he doesn't? Who's to say that he doesn't? Stranger things have happened. Alberto Torres, who was the best, worst King of the Ring winner? Probably worst would be Mabel. Uh, best King of the Ring winner probably would be Austin. No, that's just one perspective. Let's see here. Peter Gunn should the... WWE air NXT pay-per-views in place of meaningless pay-per-views like Hell in a Cell. No, they should just do a better job with those filler meaningless pay-per-views, frankly. So thanks again to you guys that submitted your questions for part one of this Facebook Friday Q&A. Part two is coming up in just a little bit. It will be a link annotation, whatever, here at the end of this video so that we can click and now watch part two.